Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got another unboxing for you, and today we are doing the NECA Back to the Future Ultimate Edition Doc Brown. This is another one of those awesome clearance finds. Uh, in fact, I'm probably just have to start making videos dedicated to awesome toys that are on um, clearance uh, that I tend to find out in the wild. This one I found at a Walmart when I was on an out-of-town trip yesterday. Uh, and normally these retail for about $29.99 and this one was actually on clearance for $8, or I'm sorry, wasn't even $8, it was $11, excuse me, I don't know why I said $8, weird, uh, $11, uh, which is a steal for this one. I've actually been eyeing this one for a while, uh, but with NECA figures, um, you know, you do have some quality issues that tend to happen. Um, obviously they're not for playing, they're more for display. Uh, some of them have the tendency of being kind of brittle and breaking real easy. And that's why I've always been hesitant about that $30 price point on these. I mean, I get it. They're very high detailed. Uh, but at the same time, when you want to spend that kind of money, you want to make sure something's going to last. And if it falls off the shelf, it's not going to break. Just like that. So, um, yeah, $11. It was a steal. So I jumped on it now to find me a Marty to go with it. Because actually, out of all the Doc Browns they've made, uh, this one is my favorite. Uh, by far, so um, I'm definitely happy to add this one to the collection. So we're gonna go ahead and check out the box, review um, basically the design, look at it real quick, then we're gonna open it up and check out the figure. So first off, we got the front here, which looks like, you know, just a pile of papers on Doc's work desk. Uh, if you've ever seen the Back to the Future films, you definitely uh, are very familiar with this layout and of course, you know, some of the images uh, you know, like the Save the Clock Tower flyer there, things of that nature. Which I actually got one of those miniature replicas of the flyer uh, when I went and saw Back to the Future in a theater um, a few years back, uh, which was, it was pretty cool and it was really awesome seeing it uh, in a theater. So, uh, yeah, basic box design right there, uh, front cover. Uh, it does have Velcro straps for the side, so if you do want to keep it um, in package, uh, they do des definitely stay that way and display great. Uh, however, this one, I'm going to let it breathe. So there's Doc. Got a couple uh, accessories with him. Got some hands. Uh, he's got his tools with him, you know, like he had on whenever he was working on uh, the line he was running to the clock tower for the lightning strike. Uh, alternate head, which that's the one I'm going to be displaying it with. That screaming head is tremendous. Um, just looking at it from the outside in, um, the figure looks great. I mean, the face looks awesome. Definitely um, a regular um, nice thing about NECA stuff is when it comes to some of these properties they have, uh, they have great detail on the facials on them. The John Nada from They Live was no exception, uh, and this one is definitely following in line with that. So there he is inside the window. Look at the rest of the box now. There we go. Back to the Future logo. The DeLorean. Uh, you know, Ultimate Doc Brown right there. On the back here, we got a few action shots of the figure, uh, which is something that um, I've been really harping on lately with the McFarlane stuff, where I wish they would have more action shots of the actual figure on the box rather than just comic book cover images. So very cool to have those on the back. A little bit of a blurb there about Doc Brown. And it, of course, also shows other figures in the set, uh, like the three different Marty McFlys and the Biff Tannen right there at the bottom. Very cool. And of course, side of the box is about the same as well as the top. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing open. And guess what? I know tearing with the fingers today, I did remember the box tool. So kids, just get your parents' permission before you use something like this or have them do it for you. Um, obviously, I don't know if any kids are actually watching this, but hey, if you are, safety first, my friends. Safety first. Okay, so, uh, box is empty. It's got a little insert, which is kind of nice, which actually looks like Doc Brown's house. That's very cool. Uh, I won't end up using it, but it's pretty nice that they do have that. Uh, for anybody who wants to use it for the background in a detog or just on a shelf, uh, to kind of add to the, uh, you know, the vibrancy of the display. All right, so first we got a little plastic envelope here, which looks like, it is a blueprint of Doc's house, as well as a blueprint of the flux capacitor right there. So that's pretty cool. I'm not sure if maybe you have a table display you can put with them and lay these out on top of it uh, for added effect. Uh, these feel like they may be stickers. Um, I could be wrong. Um, 
we're just gonna leave those in there. No muss, no fuss, no reason to scatter that stuff around. Okay, first, Doc, inside of the plastic prison. Now, right away, he's got the one thing that I don't like. These twist ties. We've talked about this before. I like how some of the newer McFarlane stuff, uh, as well as wrestling figures, are starting to utilize the stretchy plastic straps that you can just basically rip right out or pop right off, but yet are still firm enough to hold the figure in. Uh, these twist ties are kind of a pain. It just You spend more time fumbling with those than you do actually getting the figure out of the package. I get why NECA is maybe doing that because of their quality issues uh, of figures breaking somewhat easily from limited amounts of force compared to other figures, but at the same time, I do feel like they could probably still get away with using the stretchy ones and they still do the same job. It may even be more cost efficient doing it that way too than these um, weird twist ties because you know, these have uh, little wires to the middle, I believe. So you would assume that because they do have little wires in them, they would actually cost more to produce, but um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a weird topic for discussion. So, uh, while I sit here and fumble with these, let's go ahead and talk about another couple things. Coming up on the channel fairly soon, I'm going to try to diversify our video options just a little bit. Uh, I'm still going to continue doing box openings, uh, package openings, and figure reviews. Uh, however, I'm going to do a few other things too. Like I'm actually going to do some in-package figure reviews, as in stuff I keep mint on card and plan to keep mint on card. I'll still review them, kind of show off the figure and the package. Uh, just so you, you know, you can kind of see some of those things. Some will be older stuff uh, from my vintage collection, but some will also be current, modern, that you can find in a Target this week. Uh, but it is something I do want to try and spread out a little bit and do more of. May also eventually do some uh, figure hunts, possibly. Uh, and who knows, eventually, may even branch off and do a video podcast of some sort, or even just a video discussion of, you know, some weird off-topic about comics, toys, wrestling, you name it, you know, who knows? I can go on for days about stuff, so uh, I may as well maximize um, what I can add content-wise and give you guys more stuff to watch. I have had a lot of good feedback about the videos, people are really enjoying what they're seeing, uh, so please, please uh, remember to subscribe, and thank you again for um, all the love. I really do appreciate all of the messages and kind words about how much you enjoy the content on my channel. All right, so now that we have Doc unboxed, here is the figure. So we got ourselves a rubber trench coat, which is very nice. Uh, the design on his clothes are very on point uh, with the way they were in the film, which I definitely enjoy. Uh, the basic head that comes on it is very cool. I love the facial um, features on him. Very well detailed, very clean. No paint run over, uh, no issues there. Posability, uh, there is double jointed elbows, which is nice. The hands do turn, so that's very cool. Um, not There's a little bit of give in the ankles here, but they are kind of tight, so I'm not gonna push the point. That's something that is kind of a downside with NECA figures, is some of the joints, if they're tight right away, you probably want to heat them up before you go full-blown bending them because some of them can just snap right off uh, with too much pressure. So uh, by all means, if you ever buy a NECA figure and you have that problem, uh, you can always warm it up with a hair dryer to loosen up the joint or maybe even you know um, heat up some water in the microwave and um, submerge it in that. I mean, now that part, I'm a little sketchy. I use that more for wrestling figures for swapping heads. Um, but nevertheless, heat up the joint before you try to move it if it's that tight on NECA stuff. All right, so first we're gonna pop the head off and hope it doesn't go bad. Okay, that came off very, very easily. Thank goodness for that. I've had a lot of issues with head swaps on Mattel uh, WWE Elite stuff uh, that has resulted in the neck joint here cracking. Um, which I and my sons are not necessarily fans of and has actually ruined a couple figures. So hopefully they can find a way to remedy that problem. All right, so there we go. That is the screaming head, which is incredible. I love it. That, that, that just, it's such a great face. I love Christopher Lloyd and they captured his likeness perfectly in this figure. So that's very cool. Now, the other hands it comes with on this one, you have the gloves. 
But then you also have the bare hands that have, looks like bracelets and watches on them. I guess he's got two watches. Yeah, it's two watches. Interesting. Uh, but they are pretty nice. Look good. Good skin color. Uh, no bleed over on the paint from uh, the watches. And in fact, let's go ahead and see how well the hands swap off real quick before we proceed. Those came off pretty easily. So that's, that's a thumbs up for me right there right away. No disappointment in that area. That's something else too with the head swap. Um, when I had my John Nada figure, uh, the head was a little difficult on it to swap. That's why I was kind of concerned with Doc, but um, no disappointment there. It swapped very easily. Now, something to notice is obviously with the bare hands, uh, these do not really have um, a way of holding the wrench. So the wrench is probably more uh, useful with the gloved hands. Let's go ahead and put these goggles on them. See how, okay, so the goggle band is slightly stretchy, not real, not real stretchy though, so uh, by all means, don't think you're gonna get away with getting it on there all the way. Um, but, okay, see it's not staying on too well, and I'm afraid to stretch it all the way over his hair. So it may be something you do it like that, which on your display is gonna look fine. I uh, really don't foresee it falling too easily. Now getting it over his eyes, different story. I wouldn't push the point because I do feel like that strap would break very easily and then of course lastly we'll go ahead and look at the wrench accessory basic wrench looks great though good color looks worn uh, good job on making a simple simple accessory uh, look like it belongs uh, with this figure from that particular moment and scene in the movie so i'm gonna swap his hands back over i think i'm gonna keep the screaming face with the gloves and that's something else too. I love the detail. There is the watch on the wrist for the bare hands. However, um, the watches are completely blocked uh, from view because of the cuffs uh, on his sleeves. So that that is a little a little bit of a bummer. But I think I'm going to go with this setup for the display. You got your wrench in one hand. Oh gosh! And then, well, I had a wrench in one hand and, and the goggles on his head. However. I've dropped it. So, okay. Okay, so we're going to get that back in there. We're going to get his goggles back on. Screamy Doc Brown. There we go. Clock Tower scene from Back of the Future. Absolutely uh, iconic facial expression uh, from Christopher Lloyd. Uh, great figure. This looks wonderful out of package. Really excited to add this one to the collection. So, I uh, wish this one had a stand. That's fine. I'll find a way to work around that. Who knows? Because um, right now it is not standing super. He's very, very top heavy. And so he's not standing well at all. I mean, wow. Okay. So there you go. There is an issue with this one. Um, standing might be a problem. There are peg holes in the bottom. So if you have any kind of other figure stands uh, that you have just laying around, um, I would highly suggest putting a stand under him because um, as it stands fresh out of the box, he does not stand very well at all. So I'm just going to set him aside there, quit fidgeting with him. Thanks again for joining me for the video. Remember to like, share, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Collecting Raj. And if, of course, if you have any suggestions or comments, please feel free uh, to leave any comments you want. And also you can even direct message me as well uh, through Instagram if you have any questions or want to see something in particular. But as always, thank you again for joining me and I'll see you next time.